In this video, I'm going to talk about this ink called Lexington Grey. This is an ink that every artist who works with fountain pens should know about because of its tremendous versatility. As you can see, this is a very pretty, slightly bluish grey that somewhat resembles graphite. You can see that it even has a slightly blue undertone in this swatch that I did on wet paper. Now, one of the things that makes this ink really interesting is that it has a quality that in the fountain pen world is called shading. In our terms, that means that it's a very transparent ink and that its degree of darkness depends on how heavily it's applied or the number of applications you put down. In other words, this ink can look like gray, but it also has the capacity to look almost black. This is a really useful quality that allows you to gently build up your values, making it a bit easier to use than just pure black ink. The other great thing about this ink is that it's entirely waterproof, which means you can use it in a combination with washes or watercolor. In this drawing, for example, I put a dilution of this ink into a Pentel water brush right here. In fact, I have two concentrations, a lighter concentration and a slightly darker concentration, and then went over my ink drawing once it was dry. This is a technique that artists often use when doing urban sketching or just quick sketching while traveling because all you need is a pen and a water brush and perhaps a, water, uh, a paper towel. Um, now once again, it also works well with watercolor, but you have to be careful because the ink is not pure black and if your lines are not heavy enough, quite often there's a chance that they will get lost. So in this drawing, I started the sketch with Lexington Gray and you can see that in some of the shadow areas that Lexington Gray is perhaps a little bit too subtle, which is why I had to go over this drawing towards the end with a darker black. However, had I anticipated that effect, I would have drawn a little bit heavier with Lexington Gray and I wouldn't have had that issue. So let's do some tests of this ink so you can see its unique color and working properties. Then I'll do a quick pen and ink drawing and then go over it with my Pentel brush so you can see how this combination of different techniques works. So as previously mentioned, this is Lexington Gray. And you can see this ink's shading properties, its transparent properties in these figure eights here. Where the ink builds up a little bit more, it goes almost pure black, and up here it's kind of a light gray. This ink is very quick drying and very water resistant because it actually reacts with the cellulose in your paper and stays put even after just a few seconds. So if we wait maybe five, six seconds here and go over it with a little bit of water, you'll see that there'll be almost no smearing at all. Let's go over it with a water brush. You can see that there's a little bit of residue, but it more or less stays put. This is not the case with other water resistant or waterproof inks. So for instance, this is Noodler's Black. Really good, highly water resistant ink. However, if I don't give this enough time to dry, it's going to leak everywhere. So let's wait five, six seconds and you'll see what happens. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see that I didn't give the sink nearly enough time to dry. Um, <clears throat> again, this property makes the sink very useful, not just for pen and ink work, but also in combination with ink washes. Um, in fact, I almost always have this ink in my water brushes and carry them around with me when doing sketches. So here I've got a water brush that's filled with about a 50-50 concentration, 50% ink, 50% water, and then this one I have filled with a very light wash, a light gray. Okay, so let me show you how this technique works in practice. I'm going to do a little drawing demo for you guys. Okay, now that I have the drawing penciled in, I'm going to go into it with a fountain pen filled with my Lexington Gray. The fountain pen itself is a Twisby 580 Nickel Gray, which I'm embarrassed to say I bought specifically to use with this Lexington Gray. The nib in this Twisby has been replaced with a number 5 Ultra Flex nib from Fountain Pen Revolution, which works absolutely great. I'll leave a description of this pen and a link to a video where I talk more about it below this video. The main advantage of using Lexington Gray as opposed to a Noodler's Black or any kind of other opaque black is the fact that the transparency allows me a little more control over subtle transitions in value. The faster I put down the stroke, the lighter the gray is going to be. And then when I slow down, it allows a little bit more of the ink to go into the stroke, which makes the stroke darker. So this is one additional way of controlling the value, which I wouldn't have access to if I was working with a pure black ink. Um, 
The other advantage, again, is that this this ink is very fast drying. Um, I have a tendency to smear my drawings if I'm not careful, and particularly when I'm using the water-resistant ink, like Nuller's Black or Carbon Black, uh, sometimes, if I'm not careful, especially if I'm not working from the upper left to the bottom right, I'm going to have a tendency to pass the back of my hand against the drawing and smear it a little bit. This never happens with Lexington Gray. Uh, as soon as the stroke goes down, it dries, and I can go over it, which also means I don't have to wait to apply my washes. So that's going to be the next step. That's something I'm anticipating, by the way. Uh, so I know that I'm going to put in very light transitions with the wash, and as a result, I don't have to do that with my fountain pen. Now, because I'm using Lexington Gray, it also allows me not to have to switch nibs. Uh, I can work very light with just a single pen, with a single nib width, uh, because this fountain pen revolution nib is not an extra fine. It's probably somewhere between a fine and a medium. Um, if I was using an opaque black, I'd probably have to switch nibs in order to get finer details. Um, even if I'm using a flex nib, I'll have to switch. Whereas in this case, because I'm able to really delicately control light values, I don't have to do that. I can do my entire drawing with a single pen alone. And you can see like where I slow down where I put a lot of pressure, the ink goes almost entirely black. Here I'm speeding up a little bit, which creates a gray effect. So this ink almost resembles graphite in that, in that respect. Uh, the fact that the color almost changes depending on how much pressure you put down, the value definitely changes, um, adds one additional layer of subtlety and complexity that is impossible to get just using black alone. Okay, now I'm taking a Pentel water brush with highly diluted Lexington Gray ink and reinforcing some of the shadows, putting in some of the subtle transitions. Um, you can see that the ink is staying perfectly put, there's no residue, nothing's washing away, and um, I didn't wait all that long for this ink to dry in order to do that. Again, this is one of the main advantages, particularly when you're working on a damp day where things aren't drying quickly. Uh, I'd have to wait quite a long time for the Noodler's Black to dry before doing this. Now I'm going in with a slightly darker 50-50 uh, dilution. So this water brush is filled with 50% Lexington Gray and 50% water. And just reinforcing some of the shadows. Um, this technique is very popular with urban sketchers, anybody who travels and doesn't have a lot of room for art supplies. Uh, by the way, you can go even darker by taking a little bit of ink from your nib and applying it to your water brush. So that's what I'm doing here. Just showing you another way you can uh, apply ink wash to your to your drawing. Okay, well there's the demo. Um, Lexington Gray ink. Uh, this is an ink that I think every artist that works with fountain pens should know about and have in their arsenal.